And now, Grogu's and Gragras, I give you Watto. Please, please, you flatter me, come on. Please, we are getting a late start, everyone. We don't have time for an unforced standing ovation. Oh, no, no, fight it a little bit. Stay up, fight it a little. Come on, please, folks, we're getting a late start. We don't have time. I don't want to point fingers. But last time I checked, this show has one advertised producer. And perhaps he did not tell me that I was needed on stage. <laughs> no fingers pointed. It's a fingerless song. I could be speaking of anyone. Hello, Seattle. I will admit it is a mild insult to be here at the Make Believe Festival. It is an insult. Because last I checked, this is a very real talk show <laughs> in which we talk to real guests, check, check, as two real people, Watto and George Lucas. <laughs> a person who absolutely exists and a person who is absolutely the person they're saying they are on stage. <laughs> there is nothing make-believe about this show. I need to set those expectations in place. Nothing make everything you're going to see tonight is real. <laughs> True. For the next 85 minutes, 85, <laughs> we're gonna call this the realest fuck festival. <laughs> we're going to call this the, you cannot handle this level of reality festival. <laughs> Virtual reality, <laughs> literal reality just showed up in Seattle. The realest shit imaginable. Uh, raise your hand, make some noise, if you have ever, in any way, in any format, absorbed the George Lucas talk show before. <laughs> a warm crowd on a rainy day. Now, raise your hand and keep it up if you have no idea what you're about to see. Okay. Great. This is a very safe space. I want to make that clear. This is a real, reality-based safe space. But you in the Star Tour shirt, if you don't mind. Safe space. No wrong answers. I swear I mean this. This isn't some TikTok video where I'm trying to score points by dunking on you. Safe space. What do you think you are about to see? A very real talk show. Nailed it. Perfect. <laughs> no further table setting necessary. Realist talk show in America. No, no forklifts driving our car pool karaoke. God, if I hadn't stumbled over my words, that very topical joke would have killed. Let's just run through some of the paces quickly, because you got the hot show. I got to get this show started. Got the hot show. What do you do if something funny happens? <laughs> well, don't be sheep about it. You also can just sort the process. <laughs> Laugh if it's honest, if it's genuine, but you can also do a little bit of a <laughs> It could be a drive homer. You know what? That was funny. The chord and joke he made. What do you do if something sad happens on the show tonight? But, but do it like you mean it, because <laughs> it can come off as condescending <laughs> if the sincerity is not there. Uh, and what do you do if NDAs are broken tonight? But then also, I saw it right here. Yep. <laughs> and I want to make it very clear. If an NDA is broken and that is acknowledged, I don't know, it might not happen, it might. If it does, I want everyone in this crowd to go, Zip. 
and make the sound effect. With that, I think you're about as ready as I've ever seen a crowd be. I start the fucking show. Welcome retired filmmaker, George Lucas. House lights up, let's see the people's champion. Let's get some house lights up in here. the people. Who else would ever? The staff of the venue seems vaguely uncomfortable. Hello everyone, I'm George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. Otto, uh, announcer slash warm up comic slash sidekick slash flying space Jew coming to you in stereo. And uh, I just want to say before we start, I'm a very satisfied shareholder. Uh, and I, I want to speak out. I'm, I'm, my vote is I'm with Bob, Bob Iger. Yeah. I know we're in the Twin Peaks area of the country. Bob is not very popular up here because he killed Laura Palmer. Uh, uh, and, and specifically, Bob Iger canceled Twin Peaks uh, at the end of season two, so it works on both levels. Sure. Uh, why don't now, we had to, normally we don't throw, a, there was a screening here uh, before, and we normally don't throw the set together so much. I was told that you would sit here by me. Well, well, well. Now, we don't normally do that because we like to frame the guests between us. We, we, I would almost say we never do that. Yeah, I, I can't I, remember. I see one solve to this. Yeah, what's that? Patrick Kotner. Patrick the Producer of the George Lucas talk show. Yeah. yeah. Look, I mean, Watto, you can sit, hello, hi, thank you for coming. You can sit wherever you want to sit, really, but I thought you would want to sit down here. Look, I'm, I'm in a generous mood today. And I just feel like I'm so used to us being the bread of the sandwich. Yeah. This chair being here, just imagining myself there, it, it, it feels like it would throw me off, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I, I mean either. this from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. Patrick, yeah. I think you should move that chair over here. 
But then that really, we got to move everything else down, Bono. Oh, okay. So that's okay, so that's a good idea. That's, that's good producing. See, that's producing. That's producing. You, you identify the problem, then you solve it. I wouldn't have thought of that. And oh, he, this is above and See? beyond. Even I'm helping out. Look, he handed me this as if that was my job to hold his fucking drink. Uh, I'm gonna drop it, I'm gonna drop it, I'm gonna drop it. Oh, drop Patrick, it. Patrick, Patrick, don't let him drop the coffee! Patrick, don't let him drop the coffee! Patrick, don't let him drop the coffee, Patrick! Patrick, oh my god, the coffee is getting so close to being dropped! Oh my god, the tension in this room right now! Patrick in stereo, the coffee! The coffee, Patrick! Oh no, Patrick, the two fingers on the coffee! Whew. Oh boy, <laughs> starting hot. Uh, well done, Patrick. Thanks Look how so easy much. that was. Just make this normal. Unbelievable. It works great. It looks great. And you great. know what? PGA is gonna take notice of that. Yeah. Put you on that tour. Uh -huh. The PGA tour. Yeah. <laughs> People don't know this. Yeah. That most. <laughs> the most established members. Yeah. Of the Producers Guild of America. Yeah are also pretty damn good golfers. Yeah, that's right. A lot of deals get made out on the green. Yep. Yeah, you're gonna get on that tour, Patrick. They're gonna be calling you little Putt-Putt. Is that the new name? Yep, maybe. Okay. Uh, it depends, let's see how it, how it catches on with the fans. Okay, great, little putt, -putt. I'm actually out of breath from doing the coffee drop yeah. dance. Uh, I think we should. I think we should get to the guest because we we've got. To Patrick, I would love it. You're trying to buffer and stall. I think we should get to the guest. Yeah, I agree. He's doing some great physical producing, but run of shows a little wonky today. Yeah, Patrick, it's a two to two to one vote here. Is You're it out two to one vote. Bring the get to the guest. Patrick, we hate to strong bomb you, but Call I would like out. to bring out the guest. I, I agree, Patrick. Yes. Will you please concede on this one point? Can Patrick, we bring out the guest? We're so close okay. to closing a deal. Okay. okay. Bring them out. Grubus and Gragas, please welcome to the stage, Gambrell and Madeline Smithog! <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Oh. oh. Two of Bellevue's best and brightest <laughs> in the house tonight. Bellevue's best and brightest. Ah, oh, yes. Triple B. <laughs> no one has ever said that about me. We're starting it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the George Lucas talk show. I, I am so happy to have a, an old friend here and a new friend. Now, I don't believe we've ever met before, have no, we? No, we just met back in the green room, but you were in a different personality then? Yeah, I'm a little, uh, before I come on stage, I'm a little different. Backstage, yeah, George yeah, yeah. is kind of so, a different uh, guy. I'm Madeline Smithberg, just yeah. so because uh, yeah. I don't want anyone to get confused over stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think I'm in, you guys are in my fever dream. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm not quite sure where I am. You're not usually the guest. Uh, well, no, here's the weird thing. I, yeah, I, uh, I'm, do, do, will someone else say who I am so I don't sure. have to sound you're a, you're a television producer. You're a, a, a talent, uh, what was your title on Letterman? It was talent. I was talent, uh, I was talent coordinator into yeah. segment producer. Yeah. Uh, I, I spent 30 years in late night television. You could My, teach him a few tricks. What? You could teach him a few tricks. Okay, I, I was thinking that in yeah. the prep to this. Yeah. I was like, what are we going to talk about? It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's what I said. I'm like, so we'll figure how it out. long is the show? Because some friend of mine was like, it's 36 hours long. I was like, <laughs> the fuck? It's funny that in his failure to prep you, <laughs> he actually provided you with exactly what? what? Exactly. Yeah. All this great material. Right, then you I'm, need to take him to I, school. I started following you guys on social media. Yeah. And uh, is there any nerd part of Seattle you didn't visit? <laughs> No. Because it literally was like a flip book <laughs> <laughs> in real time. Like we were busy. so many photos from uh, Mopop. Yes. Like yes. literally, I think there's some copyright issues now. Come after me. I'm not, That's what I I'm, say. I'm not coming after anybody. Um, but then uh, the, 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 the Twin Peaks we house. We had a big Twin Peaks couple days. George, George and I, George, should I bring out our, our little, our little you treat? You have to. 
You have to. Yeah. Our little treat? Yeah. We no. bought, George and I went to the, the R&R diner this morning. Just a, couple of, just a couple of diabetics go into a diner. <laughs> we got a full cherry pie. Oh my God, that's hilarious. So if anyone would like some cherry pie on the, on the dais, uh, I, will, I will pass them out. Uh, you don't have pass, to, more for us, but. I think that this is awesome and I can channel Kyle MacLachlan. And, yes. Yeah. I do, I, not to try to compete in Big Dog Patrick, but I should acknowledge that I did go and get myself a damn okay cup of coffee from backstage. <laughs> This was just from the Keurig machine. I have to you admit. You see, here in Seattle, we do this all day long. We kind of, we talk about Frasier and uh, <laughs> you know, Jimi Hendrix. And uh, wait, wait, we were in Italy. Uh, my husband and I was in the front row uh, last year about this time. And everyone goes, oh, Seattle, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Grey's Anatomy, uh, Frasier. And then they stop. They, I guess, I don't know. Twin Peaks must have been there, but I don't know when. Three Hall of Fame TV shows is pretty wild. It's and pretty especially good. for three shows that are very different from one another. Correct, correct. And you don't expect it here. You expect, right. you know, the Museum of Norwegian Art, which I think you guys missed. <laughs> yeah. I, I have to admit, I was, I, you know, I, David and I both had uh, really important ABC dramas around the same time when Bob Iger, uh, more power to him. Uh, Beautiful when, Bob. When he was in charge of ABC, there were two shows that were changed in the face of television. There was Twin Peaks and there was the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. And my mistake was, he, he, they were smart because Twin Peaks, all the key locations are up here and you can get to them in a day. Indiana Jones all over the world. You know, all you can't, he world. goes to Belgium, he goes wherever he wants, cha -ching, you know? Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. You can't hit all the hot spots that young Indy went to in one day, and, and that, that was my mistake. Yeah, yeah, that was a bad mistake. Yeah. And also the switch from like the big screen to the small screen is often, no, I'm actually good, but you can give it to the, yeah, you're gonna to donate. the front row. I don't oh, think you guys want to see me try to eat cherry pie oh, okay, and hold a mic. <laughs> Like, Patrick I'm just sparing is, you, pain. Patrick is getting so angry that we're not taking the cherry pie that he didn't clear with any of us pre-show. It's really insulting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Why well, I want cherry, I'm not the cherry person. Okay, can I just finish telling my intro? Please, because yes, no one yes. else was doing it. Um, <laughs> so I'll just have to like step in. I'll be the executive producer for the night if you guys want. That's fine, I mean Because I can whip this thing into shape, it's what I do. But, uh, so yeah, I worked at Letterman from 86 to 92, uh, and then my claim to fame, probably, is that I was a co-creator with Liz Winstead of The Daily Show, and I ran it for its first seven years. <laughs> the moment of zen was inspired by my cat Lillian, who would watch the CBS uh, This Morning thing, and they would go, no, we'd leave you as Charles Geralt with egrets nesting in the wetlands of Minnesota, and it would be three minutes of fucking birds. And my cat would just sit there with her tail swishing, and there was no YouTube, so I couldn't post it and get like, you know, cute animal video. Like cats hadn't taken over the world yet because the internet belongs to them, believe me. But um, so I did that, and then uh, what else did I do? I did a bunch of shit, but during, uh, I moved here uh, seven years ago to be with a guy that's in the front row that broke my heart in New York in 1986, and then <laughs> found me on Facebook and uh, asked me to come here so yeah. we could get married, but our wedding got canceled because of COVID. But anyway, um, so I pivoted at the age of 16. I became a chef. I got to Seattle and realized there's no industry here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I was commuting, and it was really tiring and expensive, and realized I hated uh, show business at that point. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. A bunch it's of tough idiots. business. Yeah. yeah. You, gotta, you gotta strike out your own little path. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I became a chef, and we're planning our wedding on a beach in Mexico, and then COVID hits, and my chef job goes away, and my wedding it evaporates, and we go into lockdown, and I, I, for the first time ever, I put myself on camera. I had always been producing other people, mostly mm -hmm. white men, and uh, <laughs> just because I like it that way. And uh, I chose it. I was in my rider. Uh, no women, no diversity. That's what I said. I just want them all white and male. And, and I'll we check. tried that on episode four. Uh, <laughs> 
it, it worked, but it's not the ideal, you know? No, it just isn't. But anyway, I, uh, I, I launched a, I just, I've loved food my whole life, and I launched a YouTube channel. It was called Mad in the Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I put myself on camera, and the damn thing took off. Mm -hmm. And uh, suddenly, I was on camera, and I was like, why haven't I done this before? I'm <laughs> always so interested in, like, a performer process, because everyone has their own method of how they sort of drop in, right, that right. you have to perform. Did you find it hard to conjure the anger to be mad in the kitchen. Did you sometimes <laughs> wish oh, you would take the title Madeline. that didn't box you in? It was short for mad. I That's my nickname. I know you were. <laughs> I actually, I worked in comedy for a long time. <laughs> I, I, I get jokes. Yeah. I know most women don't. <laughs> my experience. Now, anyway, but then I got breast cancer, but we'll leave that there. And uh, we're through it, we're back. Yeah. The hair is a we're little different. <laughs> And uh, get out of the house again. It's been a wonderful couple of years, just saying. For everybody, I think I, I speak for us all. That yeah. it's been. And now you're here. And now I'm here. And I love it. it and all, you should it talk about It you. all led to this moment. Okay. It all led to this moment with lights in my eyes and silhouettes out there <laughs> sitting next to uh -huh. this thing. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I gotta change my sleeping medication because so, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in a commercial like the kind they run during like MSNBC with like two minutes of content and four minutes of side effects. That's He's the I side effect. I oh, read for one yeah. of those. Yeah. They yeah. cause yeah. delusional visions. Yeah. Like that's yeah, it. Yeah. Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Karen, your turn. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, I am uh, Karen Prell. Mm -hmm. I am a a. Uh, Puppeteer and com computer animator. Mm -hmm. I worked on the, uh, I performed the puppet and voice of Red Fraggle in the original Fraggle Rock. Woo. Keep Woo. the earrings. If you're and close enough to see the earrings on camera. <laughs> and I also performed the puppet and voice of Red Fraggle in the new version of Fraggle Rock, Back to the Rock. Back to the Rock! Woo. That is to now rock. Apple on TV Apple Plus. TV Plus. The Woo. first season is out. The second season goes on uh, Apple TV Plus next Friday, March 29th. Mm -hmm. And it's, woo, it's been this amazing full, full circle. And in between, in between the Fraggle bookends, I uh, puppeteered the Worm in Labyrinth and um, woo, worked, worked with uh, Jim, Jim Henson and, uh, and George, George on on the Labyrinth and, and uh, many, many other Henson productions. And then when puppeteering began to get replaced by computer animation, I uh, pivoted to um, doing computer animation my, myself. So I worked at, uh, uh, as an animator at uh, Pixar, worked on Toy Story 2. Company. Oh! Pixar, Pixar, company that I created. Yes, and then yes sold. it is. Yes, we keep thank forgetting you. about that. Thank you. And then sold to the people <laughs> who now make Fraggle Rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, yeah, Toy, Toy Story and, and a few uh, Pixar, Pixar movies and then bounced around a few different uh, uh, animation companies. And then about 16 years ago, I ended up in Bellevue, working uh, at uh, Valve, doing animation on um, computer games. And uh, one of the big things I did was animating uh, Wheatley for like the first two thirds of Portal 2. Yeah. Cool. Cool. You're talking about, but. Cool. <laughs> they do. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, there's been a lot, lot of crossover between uh, puppeteering and uh, computer animation and uh, uh, I'm just uh, grateful to have had a chance to get back to uh, to uh, exploring the world of Fraggle Rock and be able to come back and and do computer animation when in between puppet stuff. Karen, very may, cool. May I ask, I'd like to ask you a similar kind of uh, process question. Yes. Do you have a hand workout routine? It's a generally your, your good question. Must be in short. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> Must be insured by Lloyds of London, but I'm sure there has to be some sort of uh, upkeep maintenance to make sure that the digits well, are at full force. Serious. There's, there's, there's bits of uh, stretches and things, but I've discovered that the 
the puppeteering is easier on my body than sitting or standing at a desk all day. You hear that, yes. Gen Z? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, you know, I was doing puppeteering for, for 20 years, and, uh, and that was fine. And then once, once I was kind of you know, in one place, animating, then it, it really it's does be lonelier, too. Like when you're puppeteering, there's people around you. Oh, it's it, it's rowdy. It's a party. It's, it's I love that. And, and and everything. Um, uh, although when I was at uh, Pixar, they were at one of their old buildings. They had a big circus tent in the middle, and uh, it was it was kind of a party with the the young Pixar animators. This was around 2007. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, well, that's when there were a lot of hugs going around, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Pete Hug Hug Central. Oh. Karen, Karen, I'm a bit of uh, an established Toy Story tool file. I have heard. Self proclaimed. Yes. <laughs> Self proclaimed. You didn't win it officially? <laughs> I'm working on it. Okay. okay. It's a complicated review process. It's a hard thing. <laughs> yes. And then you get like a gold like sticker on I mean, uh, fingers crossed. If things go right. We're, do you remember, because I mean, this is a famous story now, legendary. Uh, were, were you there when the, the movie went missing on Toy Story 2? Yes. It, what it happened? Got, it got, yes. Yeah, explain. There, there was uh, an issue where, uh, and this, is, this has been written about and, and publicized, everything that was on our, our uh, backup system um, uh, got deleted. Uh, I am so sorry. I really thought I was just plugging in a hairdryer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, and you know people were working. Everybody had like local things on their their computers, but like the the backed up version of the movie, um, that that had had been erased. And uh, 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 there were you know emails and messages went around, just like everybody, just don't check anything in. Turn off your computers. <laughs> and go home, we have to sort out some things. The way I have always heard this story, and obviously you're, you're a first-hand mm -hmm. account of this, but the legend I've always heard was that in real time, they were watching elements disappear on the computer. Th like, that's, that's what I've, right. I've heard. I, like I Woody's don't know hat how disappeared, then he like disappeared, <laughs> then the other characters disappeared. <laughs> and it was like, as you said, certain computers had the elements people had been working on on them, but the oh movie my. as... God. A collected whole was gone. This nightmare has just gone to a whole other <laughs> level. And this this was this was at a time before there was a lot of work from home. But there was there was one person who um, uh, I, I believe because she she was uh, uh, pregnant and mm -hmm. uh, uh, was working from home, and she had a copy of the entire movie yeah. on uh. her home machine. And uh, uh, and she, she, she lived across the bay, so she very carefully loaded up the machine <laughs> in her car, strapped it in very carefully, drove to uh, That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> and they made a copy of the movie from her machine, and then, you know, some things got, got lost, but uh, uh, they turned it around, and it uh, ended up being an amazing movie. It's so yeah. good. Yes. For you, uh, it's the best movie ever made. For you, it is uh, really good. I'm not correcting you. I'm no, just, no, no, I no, want to no. educate the audience. No, no, no. I have a 26 year old son, and I think that at a certain point in his life, I think I probably saw it a hundred times. It gets better every <laughs> time. Two years, and it yeah. got better every time. Yeah. I really. It's an immaculate film. Yeah, it's amazing. But uh, for you living through that in real time, right? Like, like in your telling of the story. You're getting the alert, hey, can everyone just turn off their computers and step away? We didn't, we didn't know what was going on, but we knew it, was it so, wasn't it was good. Something big. Yes. <laughs> did you only find out what had happened once they had solved the problem, or did at a certain point word start to leak out of like, we might be fucked? <laughs> I, I, uh, um, I, at that time, I, I can't remember how, how much, uh, uh, we, we heard directly, or uh, whether it was always just kind of rumors and not, not discussed that much, but eventually they're saying, it's okay, you can come back to work oh. now. Oh. Uh, oh. And then we just kind of picked up and, and uh, kept 
kept going. But this was after, because Toy Story 2 went through a similar I was going to say, process. it restarted itself, right, it, in it, production. It, just like Toy Story 1, they got to a certain point, and it's like, oh, wait a minute, let's stop and rethink this, and then they made it amazing. So there was a similar thing with, with Toy Story 2. Uh, when, when I was first there, I, um, uh, I, I worked on uh, Jerry's game about the little old man playing chess. Mm -hmm. oh, Oscar Jerry, winner, that, Oscar winner. That was after The Lamp. Right? The yes, lamp was yes. the first one, and then it was Jerry's game. Was and then game. worked on. Ventures uh, of Andre and Wally B. Is the first <laughs> yeah, Luxo was the first Academy Award. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, I and got then. It, and I wasn't the only one that saw it. I get it. I and and Jer Jerry's game was the first computer <laughs> animation I had ever done because uh, uh, until I, I worked at Pixar, I was still I was a puppeteer and wanted to keep being a puppeteer. And. Uh, when there was a very brief moment of time when Pixar could not find enough people who wanted to do computer animation, they were open to hiring a puppeteer <laughs> who had not animated and who had barely used a computer. This was 1997. Uh, so it was just this little, little window of time. And uh, uh, so I showed up there and did this you know, first little short film and which won an Oscar. <laughs> and Those are the Academy Awards. You guys are good. in Seattle. You might not know. <laughs> and, and then worked on Bugs Life, and then they were they were developing Toy Story Two. Oh, I was working right. on on Bugs Life, and they got Toy Story Two to a certain place, and it it, it was I, not interject. It was supposed to be direct to video at that it point, was right? Supposed it to was be not direct, even supposed to be a theatrical direct, sort of eighteen to, movie. Yeah. To, to video, and uh, so there were there was some. There were some story things that they, they needed to, to stop and, and uh, figure out. There was, there was kind of two, two things happening there, just trying to get the, the story right, and then the change uh, from straight to video to, um, to, to movies. So they actually stopped animation production for a while while they, they sorted out the, um, um, the, the, the story. And so I, I had been interested in storyboarding, so I did not get a break. I jumped over to the storyboarding team and helped figure out the new, the new story for, for Toy Story 2 and, and doing some, uh, some storyboarding. And uh, uh, in, in the mean, meantime, there were some tests happening, and one of the tests was uh, animation tests for marionettes, uh, the Woody marionettes. Uh, was done by um, my uh, my ex-husband Mike Quinn, who you guys interviewed. Friend of the Past show. And future yep. yeah. and he's, yeah. he's a wonderful, talented animator and puppeteer. He did tests of of the wow. the, the marionettes, and people were really impressed by it. And um, it it sounded like that was kind of uh, you know one one of several things that made them think, hey, this this could be really something something special. And so, so we were storyboarding for many months and then got the story turned around and uh, called back the animators and I just turned my desk the other way and went back to animating. How cool! And, and, uh, and, then, and then we lost the movie, brought it back, <laughs> and it finally came out. Yes. You see, there were almost two huge transformational processes in the movie. One going from direct to video to theatrical, mm -hmm. and the other one going from movie that does exist <laughs> to a movie that has been deleted. Yes. Which might have actually been where David Zaslav got his inspiration. I can now sort of imagine him watching Toy Story 2 DVD special features and going like, they got so close to an interesting idea here. <laughs> So close. What if we kept it off the hard drive forever? <laughs> Just but, fully wiped. Because that would have been a write-off if they had thrown the whole movie away. <laughs> Which Pixar would have been learned. able to write off Toy Story 2 for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've learned. I mean, you folks were 25 years ahead of the curve. Obviously, sometimes you don't <laughs> see these things in the moment. We now know in the future that's the best way to make movies. Clearly... Yeah. <laughs> The industry has figured out the perfect <laughs> way. You just erase the whole thing. Well, if you're because trying to make money, yeah. My assumption is that they had to pay taxes on Toy Story 2 to some Dumb. extent, that they had to fully tax that movie. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Rookie if mistake. they had never if they had never finished it and they'd lost all of the elements, then that would have been a handsome write-off. Yeah. <laughs> Karen, do you remember like when when you were in your storyboard phase? Mm -hmm. 
uh, when you shifted to the story group? Are there sequences you remember that you specifically were working on trying to crack and transform? Because they're kind of handing you these elements that they're saying, this doesn't totally, the motor's not here. Was there something you remember feeling very proud that you cracked? Ooh. Ooh. Gosh. Trick question. <laughs> Just, no, I would be impressed by anything you say. <laughs> Well, I, I, do, I do remember we had some story meetings before we were storyboarding, and, and uh, we, we met uh, a big group of us at uh, um, um, some, some uh, big, big room talk, talking through the, uh, uh, the, the story, and I was just uh, writing a lot of notes, and uh, uh, I, I spoke up and said, hey, what if Zerg followed them to the toy store? <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, but, Madeline, no one heard me. Oh, oh no! A little later, someone said, what if Zerg followed them to the toy oh, store? No! Oh. And I bet the person oh. who repeated your idea I heard it. was Zerg himself! <laughs> oh no. As, Zerg. As, as, as it happens, but... Oh, you know, it happens you know, all the you time. You did it. We're giving credit to you. We're giving you credit right now. Everyone here is a win. We're rewriting history. <laughs> so at that point, Zerg was only supposed to be in Al's toy barn. Ah, oh, gosh, that that part I can't, I can't remember. Presumably, I have to imagine. I'm giving you full credit. Do you, do you recall? And again, we're, we're, it's fine if you don't. These were things that happened many years ago, but. Was there a point that you recall in the process where there was any concerned voice that Kelsey Grammer was so identified with Seattle's Fraser Crane that <laughs> audiences would not accept him as the voice of Stinky Pete? I, I do not remember anything about that. Do you remember I thought that you brought it back to Seattle. Well, you got the, the, audience, the audience is dying for Seattle content. <laughs> audiences in the theater going, I don't get, where's the space needle? I can't orient myself in this picture. You need to have that. Yeah, in a pinch, the big giant uh, merry-go-round will work, Ferris mm. wheel will work. But there, there, there are a lot of Muppet and Fraggle fans at uh, Pixar, so they were just very uh, excited to have uh, me and that and they Mike hired too, Mike yeah, at, yeah. at the same time. Um, so they, they were open to hiring people that knew, knew uh, acting and could be taught a new tool to use a computer for, for their acting. But, but that is very smart. I had never heard that. Can I just ask one before. question? Is he the host of the show? <laughs> it's a great when question. someone who worked on Toy Story because 2 is here, kind of. The seating yeah. should be changed <laughs> again. Person. I'm really confused. This has happened before. Yeah. <laughs> Waddle likes to talk Pixar, and I, I leave him a little bit of room. OK, yeah. OK, OK. Because I feel like you need to reclaim the night here, George. <laughs> I don't feel like I need to do anything. No I'm a fucking billionaire. No offense. <laughs> He's doing pretty well. The, I, I will say this. The pie was terrible. <laughs> Too much cornstarch. I, I didn't want to interrupt. If anyone wants it, it was... That you sold it really well. Yeah. Does <laughs> <it's, it's laughs> anyone want this pie? It has one, you want it? Oh, yeah. I get, Great. Oh, I gotta take thank it. you so much. Extremely <laughs> mediocre pie. Yeah. Well, it's not cherry season. It's not. Here's even what I'll close. say. You would think if you're the restaurant that is known Correct. on television for having great cherry pie, the one thing you would the figure out is how thing. do I make good cherry pie? Well, wait. We do have a chef on the show. If they called you and said, "Will you fix this for us?" Uh, I first of all, yeah. I'm like, I I do not do baking. Baking Cooking and is, baking are two different baking things. Baking is way kind of a too anal. <laughs> You, it's like science, which I always sucked at, mm -hmm. and math. And uh, I just think, what is the fun if you have to like do only this much in this yeah. temperature? Well, apparently you don't, because they did whatever the they hell they wanted. They did whatever they wanted. So no, I just think it's not really cherry season. So right off the yeah, bat, like, sure. and we have amazing cherries here. Come on, Wenatchee. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, but it, that is true. And then, do you guys know? I'm going to switch a little bit. In California, there's that. Uh, the pea soup place, and I think oh, one of, yeah. yeah, one of them just closed. And if you're yeah. driving up like in the where the wine country is near Santa Barbara, and it's like Anderson's pea soup, there's signs for like you know a hundred miles. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my god, I love pea soup. Mm -hmm. And I went, and again, it was the worst <laughs> like pea soup I've ever had. <laughs> It was just like a bag of cornstarch with a couple of peas yeah. and absolutely no flavor. And I'm like, okay, 
No one asked you yeah. to like make this cherry pie that's sure. supposedly great or make this friggin' pea soup and you're putting like two story like po- you know yeah. like ever like if you're gonna do one thing, do it well. I have a follow up, Karen. Where was the worst pea soup you've ever had? Okay, perfect. <laughs> The same place. Whoa! It's horrible, right? <laughs> <laughs> and no wonder they closed. Yeah. It's like, come on, if you but or just have like maybe some goulash or yeah. you know a little lentil, something. Anyway, I'm. Do you have? Uh, but we like to also give people some hope. What are some places you could recommend in California for pea soup? <laughs> I, think, I just I wanted think to clarify. I, mean, I think this is a good area of conversation. Yeah. I just want to make sure the audience knows this is not an episode of Talk Soup. Right. We're just going to talk soup briefly. We're just yes. talking soup for a little. We can move on yeah. from it. And you know, it talks soup rarely actually talked talk, about, talked soup. about soup. So we're Which actually, I had a problem with. I, I also had a problem with it, too. I watched every episode, and I had never got around to any soup. I was so disappointed. But you are avoiding the question, which is, where can you recommend? Where's the best pea well, soup you ever all, had? I make the best pea soup. OK, ask and answer. Uh, that's the answer. But you're not willing to go professional. Uh, no, because I really don't have any interest in being in retail, and not only that, but uh, cooking for me was just an excuse to get myself on camera sure. and get out from behind the, you know, whatever, and I thought, oh my God, I've been on the wrong side of the camera for three decades, and, uh, but I realized that it's a really tough thing to do because I would do, uh, from my house, and a couple of people that worked with me in the audience, we would do the Today Show. And we, I did it three times over the course of Mad in the Kitchen, and you're given four and a half minutes. It's the opposite of this mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, you had to, in that time, I would have to have, I'd have to make the recipe, take the pictures of the recipe, write the recipe, and you have to be really clear, like, are you doing TBSP, period? Like, you just have to be consistent Mm -hmm. on how you do it. And then I would have to do shopping and prepping. You'd have to have a finished product, all the ingredients, and then the the actual thing in two stages of preparedness. And then you would be talking and being funny, and all of a sudden they would go, you're out of time! And then one time I like burnt my hands reaching into the mm. oven to get the finished product because I didn't realize the oven was on. And so I then at the end I'd have to like clean it all up and in the middle of that I'd have to do hair and makeup because I'm a woman. And uh, sometimes when we go on TV we have to do that sure. and it's fun, I love yeah. it. But it was early in the morning and then I'd have to like steam my chef coat and then I'd have to like figure out what I was going to talk about, what I was going to do, and then at the end, I would just like lay down on the kitchen floor sobbing. So I feel like the cooking yeah. is great, but I think we're going to move it a little bit into the background. Okay, so I should tell them if they call you, you would say no. I would say no. Okay, great. The Today Show? or No, Tweets Cafe. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. Tell them no. no. You stick to your own recipe and... Uh, do your own advertising, but maybe branch out into sure. some other kinds of okay. pie. Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> was, was Labyrinth the only time the two of you worked together officially, Karen and George? On, on Labyrinth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That was the and only I remember time. You, yeah. If you remember, <laughs> George, you visited while we were shooting the fireys in mm-hmm. the swamp. Mm-hmm. I remember I, uh, there was one day I know I visited where I fell asleep in a chair. <laughs> I heard about that. I yeah. did not, is that real? I did not yeah. Yeah. see that. <laughs> Madeline, all of this is real. <laughs> okay. I, I don't want that question asked again unless you really, really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I perforated the like <laughs> membrane of uh, reality. What do, you, what do you remember about me? I remember you were a consummate professional. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if you would have been able to notice me specifically because for the fireys, we were all dressed in, in black and all looked pretty much the same and were holding arms and legs and heads and tails and, and uh, yeah. bits and pieces and trying not to fall into holes. In A good the, producer can keep track like, of that. That's like every day at work I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying not to fall into holes. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> that's pretty is, much my life. There is a famous picture of you with Jim Henson. Mm-hmm. And you. And there's a little bitty head in between them. And that was me. Cool. Wearing, having some weird light-colored hair on my head. And what that was, was I was doing the live hands for um, uh, the, the chief fiery. And to do that, you, um, 
you know, you're, you're reaching up with, with puppets, but your head is there. And so I couldn't reach far enough to get into the hands, and my head was in front of his belly, so they scrounged up like a pink wig that matched his fur and put that on me, and that's, that's why, that's and there amazing. are other, other pictures, so that's why there's a pink, pink wig for doing the live hands so for, cool. for the fireys. Originally, they were going to have mechanical hands, um, but they had to handle things uh, uh, a lot, so I suggested just slicing open his skin and squeezing my little fingers in there, and so like the shot with the eyes and uh, rolling the dice, that was all my, my hands inside. Yeah, and we can do that all digitally now. Yeah, you can do it all digitally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to slice something open and stick your hand in it to make a movie now. You can also just pick up your phone and go, hey, can you do some hands, mm. like, play throwing dice? <laughs> and your phone can just, like, do that now. What a wonderful, and sometimes what a wonderful my phone world. does it without being asked. Mm. Yeah. It's a wonderful world we live in now. It sucks. <laughs> oh, what George digital. ever dreamed of? Well, yeah. you know, I don't know if you realize that Watto's entirely digital. I know he looks... Yeah. Practically. <laughs> no, there's nothing next to me. I'm acting. He looks good. <laughs> it's just, it's just a tennis ball. Yeah. It's just, it, yeah. Yeah, it's just right. It's like a placeholder. What was the vibe on the labyrinth set? Was it a happy set? Was it a stressful set? It was busy. It was busy. It was it was busy, and there there was a bit of a actual uh, Star Wars crossover. We were shooting at Elstree Studios, which is now a uh, Tesco's supermarket. Um, <laughs> but at the time, they they um, they shot. Uh, uh, episodes uh, four, five, and six of, of Star Wars. There, Indiana Jones, Superman, Aliens, like everything. They yeah. were they were shooting there. It was it was huge. And um, uh, now you can buy a pork pie there. Yeah, a for good under, one uh, for under five pounds. <laughs> but but there were there were bits and pieces of of like C three PO and Stormtrooper armor just in the in the corners, just <laughs> old. Old debris. So from, much uh, better than Mopop. That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and so we were shooting on five stages at, at a time. We we would do, be doing fireys and oh, it's time for the worm, and then there's the goblins and back and forth. And you'd finish one thing and be running, so you'd be jumping over the Star Wars, uh, <laughs> you know, fiberglass armor, and running off to the next stage, and then the back back and forth and back and forth. So there were there were little bits of. Uh, uh, Star Wars history just scattered around. This is before eBay or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So um, you couldn't steal it. There was no I point. <laughs> 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 but El Elstree, they shoot the Muppet Show there too. They shot the uh, Muppet Show across the street. Yeah. And so that led to the uh, crossover with uh, Jim Henson and and you because they were shooting um, the, the Muppet Show on one side of the street and the movies on the other side of the street and there were the same um, uh, some of the same puppet builders were working on both productions and mm -hmm. they just walked across the street and how cool yeah. and y you came in for the Muppet Show you did some episodes in season five right the yes, last season? the last the last season of, of the Muppet Show how did that happen how did you how did you get yourself into that world? oh well when I was a kid in high school in uh, Kent Washington I was a big fan of Disney Animation and the Muppets, and um, satisfied shareholder of Disney, <laughs> <laughs> owner owner of the Muppets, billionaire. <laughs> and I sent a videotape to the Henson Company in um, 1979 when they were needing more women puppeteers, and uh, this was back when Jim Henson did did the hiring. He saw the videotape and flew me out. To, to New York and auditioned me. Um, and they hired me for Sesame Street to do oh. a main character. Mm -hmm. And um, I failed miserably. <laughs> oh. Which it character was, was that? It, this was a character called Dina Monster mm -hmm. in 1980. And they wanted to, to get some new female characters. And she was very hyperactive. And she was like, play, play, play. Dina want to play. And, uh, but I was, I literally come from living in my parents' basement in Kent, Washington, to living in Manhattan. Mm. And, and they gave me a main character. Normally they would have people be an intern. You would do, uh, do a, like Ernie's right hand for, you know, a year or so in background mm. characters. That's exhausting. And, and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but so to get someone in a main character right away, that was very tough and I it just had not, 
hadn't been out in the world that much, and uh, she was written as a hyperactive young character. This was before Elmo. Wow. And I played her like on the nose. She's, she's, she's loud and, and wants to play and keeps, keeps annoying people. I will play that, and it was horrible. Um, you know, people don't appreciate characters like that, even if they're hilarious. You create a character who has, like, a yeah. weird voice, you know. and, you know... It takes a while for the audience to catch up. <laughs> Sometimes when you're a it, But that doesn't yeah. mean... You said, you said you described that as a failure, but I think, I think Dina Monster sounds like a fantastic character. Yeah. And very well, fun. well, it didn't work out, and... Uh, uh, they, they let me go from, from Sesame Street, and uh, uh, in fact, they said, you know, you're not going to work out as a puppeteer. You better go home. Go, go home to Seattle. Oh, go back no. to the basement. I did oh, not no. go home. Yeah. I stayed in New York. I did some uh, art jobs, and when uh, Jim Henson was auditioning people for what they called at the time the International Children's Show, um, he, he called me in. He gave me another chance. And um, uh, and so this is for the part of a uh, hyperactive character who wanted to play all the time. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh no, typecast. <laughs> oh, um, or her quiet artistic friend. I thought, oh, I'll go for the quiet artistic friend. Um, but he ended up. Uh, and in the meantime, I'd spent a year in New York City in Manhattan. Uh, living and just just getting the, the, the armor you grow when you live in New York and getting mugged and all kinds of, mm. of uh, adulting out, in, uh, out in, in New York. And um, so by the time they, uh, uh, they, they had me uh, audition and then Jim gave me this character of, of Red, I, uh, I was able to like bring some some depth and insight to a character who, on the surface, is loud and and wants to play in, in high high energy. It just kind of it just took some percolating. So yes, George. In the end, Dina Dina led to a success with uh, Red Fraggle. Red Fraggle. Red Fraggle. Yay. One of the best. <laughs> yep. Uh, that was kind of like episode one. People were like, "This guy's a little unsavory." And then George said, "Let's put the hat on." I mean, episode two, the reviews were through the hat. It was the hat. Sometimes you have to iterate the character a little bit before it totally clicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, people don't. You know, people usually associate Sesame Street with kindness, but you don't often think about that there is. You know, it's a production, it's and a pr and production involves sometimes having to make the call to let someone go. Mm -hmm. Alan, you've probably had to be in that position, as have I, where you have to let somebody you go because it's not working. You have to let them go, and you just gotta have tissues mm -hmm. with you. Yep. College business, not show kindness. No, not show mm -hmm. kindness. Do not call yeah, it. Nobody, nobody calls it show no kindness. One has ever th those words have never been uttered until I said them right now. I've never. <laughs> those have never been in the same sentence. Madeline, is there some something that you think back where you're like, that was an easy person to fire? Uh, there was one person that I fired, and I don't even remember who it was, <laughs> but I remember that I ended up crying, and she ended up comforting me. Oh, no. <laughs> I was horrible at it, and I didn't want to do it, but it yeah. was someone else told me that I had to do it, and this person and I were friends, and I had hired her, and so, yeah, she ended up, like, hugging me and patting me on the back and saying, it's okay. <laughs> so I sucked at firing. Luckily, I didn't have to do it that much. I, I have a question. I was you. much better at hiring. Oh, sure. that's a good skill. Uh, obviously, <laughs> like creating a TV show, it's it's very different in different situations. Different creators go about it different ways. Was Daily Show one of those shows where when you came in, you had figured out like the multiple season arc? Like, you know from the beginning. Oh, we think like season 26, maybe Be Trump the, gets elected. Like, uh, did you yeah, have we, all the plots? Yeah, we had it storyboarded. Yeah. No, the the if you do want to hear a little tiny bit about it. So uh, I was recruited uh, by Doug Herzog, who was running Comedy Central at the time. I had done a, I had worked at Letterman for six years, and then I had done a John Stewart show, which was a late night talk show with John on uh, MTV, and then we got syndicated, and were on Paramount, and then died a slow, fiery, horrible 
death that included like birds of prey and Marilyn Manson setting the stage on fire. And uh -huh. anyway, it was just horrifying. And uh, then uh, Doug Herzog and Eileen Katz had been two of the uh, creative executives at MTV and had moved over to Comedy Central and essentially said, we're gonna hire you and you are going to create a daily show for Comedy Central. And to which I said, absolutely not. Uh, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I don't want a show that's on. I don't know who to look at. Um, All of us. Getting fucking Everyone. whiplash. But anyway, just stare um, straight. Look the, at them. Just look out at them. Yeah. And then, yeah, the lights. But anyway, um, uh, I was like, no, I want to get pregnant. I want to have a kid. I don't want to do this. And ended up saying no until finally one day Doug was like, what are you doing? This is the job you were born to do. And he said the words that changed my mind. Uh, we'll give you, don't have to do a pilot. We'll give you a year on air to mm. figure out what it is. Wow. And uh, at the time, Liz Winstead had been my neighbor upstairs in Chelsea, and I had brought her on to the Jon Stewart show to, at the end uh, to be a segment producer, not knowing she couldn't type. <laughs> and so she was like, huh? <laughs> like touching with her fingers and all this stuff. And then the, the show went down, and then... Uh, whatever we got we sold a show to Comedy Central that they never had any intention of making that apparently they just wanted me in the building and uh, so I Doug finally cornered me and told me the thing about no pilot in a year and I was like okay and walked back into the office where Liz and I and my friend Elise Roth had been working and go okay you guys take the cards down we're gonna do this dumb daily show for Doug but he's gonna give us a year and we don't have to do a pilot and then it was like what I like to say is that, you know that game Elephant where it's like people, everybody in the room knows and the person who's it comes in and has to like guess by process of mm -hmm. elimination like, does it have a little tail? Mm -hmm. uh, yes! Uh, does it have, you know, a giant yeah. thing on the <laughs> trunk that's gray? Uh, <laughs> and you go, yes, and they go, is it an elephant? So we kept on hiring people and interviewing people and we would just eliminate what the show wasn't. Sure. And I still have the thing that we sent out to potential like contributors and it was so not The Daily Show. And then one day, we kind of had narrowed down it should be about the media and the media should be our target and we should be making fun of news because news still to this day, but like survives by scaring you. And so it was, and it became just, we, we looked at it and we were like, these people don't really care. They're all about themselves. And so we would hire someone who came from news, who was Brian Unger, and he would give us some tricks, and then we would watch. Like, And we knew that that was our target. And then one day, we were all in this room, and it was like, it was really collaborative, which is what mm -hmm. I love about television and the one thing that I miss, and especially comedy, because I always had said at the time that if I wanted to work alone, I would have gone into poetry because you're with all these brilliant people and you're all making yourself each other, which is improv, each other uh, funnier. George hates improv. No, oh, right, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it ruined time. Empire Strikes Back. They did, they improv the line and it ruined the movie. Yeah, I'm so sorry, I forgot, I forgot, but you know about improv. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we've yeah. done UCB. Yeah, yeah. UCB, yeah. I lived on in Penn South, which was above UCB, like yeah. that's where yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was what I was gonna tell you backstage, but didn't wanna ruin it and see how well it went over. But anyway, <laughs> we all, because <laughs> everyone cares so much about the original UCB <laughs> building, but I my supermarket was next to it. Yeah? Yeah, the co-op supermarket, um, which became a Gristidis. But anyway, yes, New York supermarket's gone. <laughs> but we all were like in this room and it kind of was like, you felt this wave of excitement. And I don't know who said it first. For this story, I'll say it was me, <laughs> but I don't think it really was. <laughs> and uh, we just all of a sudden were like, wait, we have it. What if we pretend we're them? Mm -hmm. And it was just like this giant exhale, and you guys here probably felt it as wind. <laughs> and that was it, we had cracked it. And once we pretended we were them, yeah. then we could get so serious. And the more serious we could get, the sillier we could be. So now I'm gonna cut to, we're in the show, we're doing the show, we've been on the air like a year, Craig Kilborn is the host, and I'm sent a videotape by this young uh, William Morris agent named uh, Mike August. And he goes, yeah, I've got this guy for you. You have to take a look at him. His name is Stephen Colbert. And I'm like, okay, whatever. 
and I pop this uh, the, to this big giant three quarter inch cassette into a giant clunky machine that goes like clunk 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 clunk, and I watch this tape and it's some sketches and one of them is from the Dana Carvey show and it's called Waiters yeah. Who Are Nauseated by Food. And it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. And it's Stephen Colbert, and he's trying to recite the specials to a patron of this restaurant, and everything that he's saying is making him vomit. <laughs> and it's the funniest premise ever. And he's like, okay, our special tonight is raw split pea soup with a... Uh, I know a good place for that. Garnish, it's in California, it's closed. <laughs> and uh, so I call Mike August. I'm like, when can he start? And the, if anyone that knows anything about show business, if I was in LA, everybody would, is that I never had to call the network to get approval. I That's hired crazy. Stephen Colbert because my gut told me this guy is great. And he came on and he was just the nicest guy in the world and amazing and had an improv, you don't like it, but had we an like improv yeah, 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 like background. And so it was like sending a writer out into the field because he was, you have an idea of what you were gonna do and you always had to go out with an ironclad plan, but in the best case scenarios, we'd throw that plan away halfway through because we would have come up with something else with my producers who were just adorable. So about six weeks after Stephen Colbert is like killing it and I'm trying to like lock him up in a deal, uh, I call back the same agent. I go, okay, this is gonna sound like the stupidest thing you've ever heard, but do you have another one? <laughs> and he was like, yes! You know that sketch you love to go back, you'll see his writing produce partner and his uh, improv partner, Steve Carell. So I go back and there's Steve Carell and I'm like, okay, call his manager, when can he start? And my adorable producers were dicks and they were like, he doesn't have it. <laughs> and I was like, can you just give him a chance? like?" You know, the, what happened with Colbert happens once in a lifetime, and you guys all know what we're doing. But this is a weird game, because what Corel would describe it was, was we were doing, sorry, improv, uh, <laughs> with the world, but the world wasn't in on the game. So they would go on, they'd be interviewing someone, and they would be doing like a comedy game in their head, but the person was just a person and would yeah. be like saying whatever they were saying. So I sent my favorite producer, Stuart Bailey, still love the guy, out to Los Angeles to do a story that for some reason had George Takai from Star Trek in it. Mm. And he kept on having to take pee breaks and, he, and they kept on losing him behind bushes in Griffith Park. <laughs> and he came out behind the bush and he was zipping up his fly. <laughs> And Stuart was like, uh, you know, the sun's going down, we gotta shoot. He's like, I am a hydrator. And uh, <laughs> so that was why George the guy always had to be. So they, we would make fun of the, the uh, you know, on air sort of talent. We had this giant mic cube of The Daily Show that was like four times the size it really should be. And Steve Carell had this trench coat and Stuart told him to do a walk and talk, which you've seen a million times if you've watched any network news show. They walk and they talk, and there's no reason. You could be standing still and talking, but it's like, ooh, we need some action, so let's have them walk and talk. And so we put him, he put him on a really steep hill in <laughs> Griffith Park in LA, and he told them to come down the really steep hill, and his eyes were locked on the camera, and his brow was furrowed, and he was holding the mic really tight, but the bottom half of his body was going crazy. <laughs> and was like mm -hmm. stumbling down the hill and weaving, but he kept the top of his body. And when I went into the edit bay, I made Stuart Bailey show me that raw footage like 15 <laughs> times. And I laughed so hard that I peed more than George Takei. <laughs> and the next day I called his manager and was like, this guy's amazing. I want to put him in a deal, so. That's cool. So. Yeah, that's very you're cool. welcome. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. When you when you encounter a young Steve who is talented, or uh, a young Steve, yeah, either one, both. Yes, I had that experience at, at, at early in my career. I met a young Steve. He's my best friend now. He heard of young Steve, uh, and it was pretty obvious to everybody that he was talented. But but there were people who were betting against him, even yeah. in the early days. Sugarland Express. People are like, not sure about not this sure, guy. Not sure he's that yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Is this Steve really all that great? Well, yes, he is. Yeah. How about let him make a fish movie? <laughs> <laughs> You're, you know, 
thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I, I did, you know. He's pretty good, that Steve. He's really good. He's really good. Yeah. But I didn't really enjoy the one, what was last year's one about his family? Fablemans? The yeah, Fablemans. Fablemans. That kind of never took off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, let them know. Let, All well, of a sudden, can I explain? And that's your fault, George, because was, everybody should have be batting a thousand in this world. Sure. That's what I think. Well, can I explain to you, Fablemans? <laughs> can I Fablemans explain that Please movie to you? Please, explain. <laughs> okay. Can you Lucas explain me? So, Steve, uh, when he was young, his parents' uh, marriage fell apart, and he didn't understand it. Oh, I, now I get it. Now, in the movie. He goes to see his first film, and there's a train wreck, and he's terrified by it, and he becomes obsessed, mm -hmm. and he keeps crashing his toy trains right. to try to understand that his mom says, how about this? How about we, f you, we give you a camera, and you film it, and you can edit it, and that way you can control it, and you don't keep destroying your toys. He's really just explaining it. Yeah. That's really yeah. what he's doing. The I, movie. I, I, I got that. <laughs> I, I got all that. I just thought when the movie ended, I was like, wait, when is it starting? The movie, <laughs> in real life... And I would have given him notes. Like, I would have given mm -hmm. Spielberg notes. Like, let's tighten this up, mm -hmm. and then let's have something happen mm -hmm. that really is up there with the train crash toward right. the end. But the mother kind of was just, she left him, which was really sad. sad. Well, in real life, yeah. he didn't know why his dad left. Yeah. Okay. And for years, just thought, because his dad didn't want him to hate his mom. So, okay, so he, he thought it up. my dad, dad left, and I yeah. don't know why, because he didn't know about the mom falling in love with the best friend. Yeah, yeah. Steven, um. in that movie, has recreated the train wreck of his parents' marriage, <laughs> the same way he recreated the train uh, the train wreck from the movie he saw. Oh, you just connected the two train wrecks for me, and I would say that the movie itself was a bit of a train wreck, but I. That's love. on purpose. That's on purpose. <laughs> That's because he's a genius. <laughs> That was intentional. Three, three train wrecks. Oh. It's a okay, trilogy. Okay, you've turned me around. You've turned me around. I'm going to watch it again. But this time I'll watch it, uh, it I, I, you know, with subtitles, which I find helps me so much. Now, hey, so, Karen, I see a bag behind this chair. Yes. Yeah, you got a bag back there? Yes. Now, George, I don't know if you've noticed some of the more recent Star Wars movies have brought back some puppet characters. Yeah, I noticed. I, I want to just yeah. very quickly I'm a major shareholder to and our audience. Patrick obviously lived in New York City for a long time, yeah. so he's still in if you see something, say something mode. <laughs> so he always feels the need to call out any unexplained bag in his surroundings. <laughs> so, so to A tiny bit on the spectrum. Yeah, yeah that's pretty. <laughs> just a little. The yeah. whole city of Seattle is, as far as I'm concerned. So to help everybody uh, celebrate the joy of actual physical puppet we are going to make oh. one minute sock puppets. Great. This Ready? is fun. A Ready? demo. Okay. We're going to all do it. All right. I'm going to pick this one. Now, these are new socks. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, that's that's one. Blue. I'm going okay. to go pink. It's, it's a okay. demo. It's a puppet recipe. I love it's it. It's a puppet recipe. I would now, have I have. You on Letterman. <laughs> I have pre-made some eyeballs with pipe cleaners. Have to keep putting my mic down. This is where lobs come in. That's the one that depends on your chest. Pick eyeball. I, I, do I pick just like that, like a pair? Okay, great. Yep. Yeah. Very amusing eyeballs. <laughs> you see. All right. <laughs> All right. You held the mic up to your hand. <laughs> It's so quickly. <laughs> so you look <laughs> like you're a puppeteer, right? Oh my god! <laughs> Here we go. Now you George, I'll come hold the mic I'm for you, George. Moron. <laughs> no, it's the power of imagination. And you tuck some of the yeah. stuff in to make them mad. Great. Oh my god. Relax your hand like that. What is wrong right with me? <laughs> I just cried off all my mistakes. I produced a movie called Tucker. <laughs> Man and his dreams. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> There's a way hand. to make puppets without glue, without sewing. As you run the no needles involved. You tuck in the mouth. Tuck in the mouth. You run the pipe cleaner through the mouth. Through the mouth. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so they're getting orthodontic surgery. 
<laughs> did it again. I have to call it out. This one I did on purpose. It's funny. You get your tight cleaners, you twist them around here. The eyes are on the table for easy access. Eyes on the table. I love the eyes on the table. The, eye, the eyes have Always have a side table for easy access to the oh, eyes. Oh, look how cute it's becoming. You made holes in the eyeballs. Now, how do you make the holes in the eyeballs? Do you do those with a, 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 a pipe cleaner, or do you use a... She can't Elephant. tell you. You can ask her. Oh, look how cute it is. There we go. Oh, my God. There we go. Oh. George. And that's, and that's what I call executive producing. That is. I didn't make the puppet, but I made sure the puppet got made. George, that's I... That's how I did my whole career. chat while I... George, I see you have a little friend who has joined us. Who's that? I George. Have to, can you come up with a cute name for mine? Ooh. Can Lord. it be... Well, I need to see it first. I need to know a little bit about the character before I know... Yeah, who's, yeah, yeah. I'm going to figure out guy? the plot line. Well, I'm still getting to know my guy. I think this guy... Oh, wait, I know. Who's the guy who's the activist shareholder uh, who's trying to take over Disney? Nelson Pites. Nelson Pites. Perfect. Nelson Perfect. Pites. Don't even need to... I'm voting he for Trump in the next election. He did it too. I feel redeemed. <laughs> Put the mic on the puppet. There's yeah. Nelson <laughs> yeah. Talk to Nelson. Nelson, uh, why do you want to be on the Disney board? Because everything's woke. Oh, God damn it, Nelson. <laughs> uh, Nelson. This guy's a real piece of work. Nelson. Because everything's woke. Yeah. Have you ever watched thing. a Disney movie, Nelson? I don't need to. I hear the people in the news chats. <laughs> Oh, this guy's so the out of date. News chats, the news Nelson? chats, really, Nelson? What are the news chats? But this Nelson? guy is an, this guy is old and not oh. very with it. I don't oh, think we no. should put him on the Disney board. <laughs> the news chats. What do you think the Disney board is made of? Wood. Oh, he doesn't oh, even no, understand. No, he doesn't He's doesn't very know anything. Nelson doesn't no. know anything about how a board works. Kind of a funny joke, though, Nelson. <laughs> What's a joke? Oh, no, He doesn't Nelson. even understand what a joke is. <laughs> Nelson. Nelson, I'm afraid if you don't know, you are. Oh. 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 Oh, Nelson. oh, I made Nelson sad, but who cares? Who He's cares? a real He's piece a of dick. shit. He's so old. We hate him, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> now, now, <laughs> now, let's let's talk about who's this on Madeline's hand, George? Who's that name? Uh, uh, who is... is uh, What's mine's name? I'm going to call... Name? It's a girl. Mm -hmm. She's a girl. She's a girl, and her she name is Stripey. Stripey. Oh. Hello, everybody. It's a great name. Because she actually has stripes. You know, I named my first cat, and her name was Thumby. And that's because I had a doll named Thumbelina. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of go, the first thing that comes out is the name. You have to. It's very good. You want to give characters names where you know immediately what their deal is. Yeah. This is a little girl, and she's striped. And that's it. Wado, what do you think your character's name is? Well, hold on. All right. <laughs> Let's wait for the grand reveal. Second eyeball's not on yet, George. It's called Eye Pierce. Ooh. You got a good color, Watto. Thank you. Uh, uh, hello. Oh, hello. I'm Bob Iger, CEO of the Walt Disney <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Uh, Nelson Peltz, please. Uh, Let me on the board. No. Nope. Nope. I want Goofy on the board. Let me on the board. I, I want Goofy right. on the board. I find your takeover attempt hostile. <laughs> this job requires a tremendous amount of imagination. Uh, you don't understand stories. <laughs> you yeah. do a pretty good Bob Iger. I Thank smell you. a Bob Iger talk show <laughs> coming. Uh, yeah. Your daughter is a mediocre actress at best. Oh. oh, not my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson's really not putting up much of a fight. I think he might be weak. Nelson, are you weak? What weak is it? Oh, oh no. Nelson. Boo. Nelson, what a... Boo. That's the board joke Boo. again. <laughs> yeah, Nelson, that's the board joke again. What are you doing? <laughs> I just want to ruin a company. Nelson. Oh, there's plenty. 
<laughs> uh, Patrick, what do you have there? You tell me. Well, I, my first my first impulse is to say that, that that person's name is Purpley. Purpley? Purpley. Purpley. Wow. Purpley and Stripey. Purpley and Stripey. I'll I take it. We're named by children. <laughs> named for children. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, because I think kids will really like these characters. What's Purpley's deal? Purpley's deal is uh, probably uh, descends from royalty and doesn't know it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. A secret prince. I like that. But But no not... cancer. No, sorry. No. Oh, oh no. no. Tons of cancer. Oh, riddled too soon. riddled too with soon. cancer. Oh, too no. Soon. Purpley, Purpley is absolutely riddled with cancer. You know, there was Dramatic one person conflict. on this panel That's who said hilarious. who said we're not gonna bring up cancer again, and then she brought up cancer. That's me! I know! No, Purpley. Stripey brought it up! Oh, okay. <laughs> Purpley, Stop that. Purpley, you're going to beat this. I know Thank you're riddled you. with it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. And so is Kate. Yes. <laughs> and yes. Charles. Wow. <laughs> Karen, look how quickly you made your puppet. We, you I did didn't even so know. Oh, this was as, as uh, with the cooking shows. This is one I made. That's early. the finished oh, yeah. product. Yeah. Does she have one eye? Or he have one? I don't know. I like he's, that. He's going to the, the running the uh, pipe cleaner through helps the mouth stay tucked in, and then you can put one eye, and you can yeah. add hair, and it's just uh, nice, hi. nice and quick. Hi! Oh, oh my God! Hi. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, that was mean! Oh no! I miss Splash Mountain. <laughs> Nelson. <laughs> Nelson. Uh, why? Why? They're turning it into a new ride. Tiana's Bayou I, Adventure, I think. No, that sounds like a bad ride. It always shut down. Oh, no. <laughs> no, but then it always rose again. Oh, no. Nelson. You can't get people wet these days. Yes. I'd rather be wet than woke. Oh, no. Nelson. Nelson, Nelson stand out. My What's favorite movie is Song of the you? South, and I'm oh, not ashamed to say. Nelson. Well, when I'm on the board, we're going to make a second Song of the <laughs> South. Oh, oh, no. so, that's the right. South. And it's going to be straight to video, and then we'll delete it, and then we'll get the <laughs> tax right off. Oh, no. Nelson. You brought it back around. Oh, I brought you, it back. Hey, Nelson, nice you're getting call back. pretty good at this. I don't Nelson. know what voice my character has. She keeps she on changing. Great. George, yeah. did you see who just joined us on stage? Look at this one, George. Oh, my goodness. Who is this? The way this is. Oh, George. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it's Yoda. Hello. George, don't oh, sue, George. I'm your biggest fan. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is easy. George, talk to them. <laughs> Uh, my hand you? is sweating so much. Are you Yaddle? <laughs> Are you Yaddle? Is this Yaddle? I think that I don't know. You ask them. Yoda. Don't look at me. What's your name? Grogu. <laughs> oh. How old are you now, Grogu? You look a little different than last time I saw you. Got a little bit of facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of us. I don't know. <laughs> they they oh, went through Grogu <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hang on, Otto. Say it again. What was that? Stand up. Say it again. It's Watto's big joke of the night. But I missed it. Here we go. George, will you say they look a little different? Hey, you look a little older now. Yeah, they went through Gro Gooberty. Gro Gooberty. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Watto. Hashtag Watto's big joke. <laughs> That was a big one. Wow. Grogu woke, Grogu broke! Oh no. Nelson! Nelson, stop Nelson. 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 Nelson, no one here Nelson. likes you. Oh. Karen, can can I ask can I say some names of some other performers that you've worked with and you just give first impression like here's a word that I would use to describe this person? Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh we'll, we'll start. I just read uh, the new great Richard Hunt biography. How would you describe Richard? Oh my gosh, he, he was a force of uh, nature and we, we still miss him. He was the original performer for, um, uh, for Scooter, for Beaker, for Janice, for Sweetums in the, um, the, the, big, the big costume for uh, Statler, one of the old mm -hmm. guys in the, uh, in, the oh. in the balcony. For the, the original uh, voice and face performer for Junior Gorgon, the original uh, fr fr Fraggle Rock, mm -hmm. he wow. was... Um, Janice! He he was Janice uh, for God's sake. Yes. 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 He he was a a, a whirlwind and, and a wonderful mentor to uh, to other puppeteers. Uh, uh, Frank, 
George's friend Frank. Oh yes, oh, yes, very, ass. very, um, uh, b very, very quiet and focused and controlled. And then when he would jump in there and do piggy or, or uh, he did fuzzy. piggy when she came on the Daily uh, Show. Ah yes, sure. Yes, uh, it was unbelievable. <laughs> uh, uh, Jer Jerry Nelson. Oh my gosh! Oh my sweet, my sweet. Uh, uh, Gobo from the original Fraggle Rock series. I loved, loved working with him. I, I, I love, I love what John Tartaglia is doing with with Gobo in the new Fraggle Rock series. But um, uh, Jerry was uh, just just one of a kind. He was a, he was an old soul, and with a beautiful voice, and and uh, a great last name. <laughs> Shout out Nelson. 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 Uh, uh, friend of the show, Steve Whitmire. Oh my gosh, a, a Wonderful, another um, amazing, uh, energetic uh, uh, force on the the original Fred Rock and uh, <laughs> he with you, of course. And uh, uh, won wonderful, wonderful s singer. I I really loved um, assisting him with Sprocket on the on the original yeah. Fred Rock. Uh, uh, Catherine Mullen, who of course helped out with Yoda too on Empire. Mm -hmm. She was um, uh, sh she's uh, another. I got to work with so many talented people then and and now. I'm I'm just so so thrilled. She and they got to work with you. <laughs> true, it's true. I I have one last name, Karen. Hmm? Nelson Peltz. <laughs> Nelson, what are you doing? doing? There. Never worked with no, him. No. You're lucky. No. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know how to run an entertainment company. George, George, do you have any giveaway stuff we can give out to the audience? Also, do we have an out on this show? Yeah, it's pretty yeah. soon. It's pretty okay. soon, right? I have no idea what time it is. It's six mm. now? Oh, we gotta go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, well, we have the rest of that pen. pie to give away. We have the rest of the pie to give away. So let's start doing that, Patrick. <laughs> well, I think we... There's a uh, thing that people also have to take, right? Didn't we talk about this before? What are we talking about? The other giveaway that we have. What do we have? Oh, God. Puppets! No. no. Here, who wants some pie? We really, we really sold the pie. Who wants some pie? Worst I cherry see, pie right. in the okay. world. Oh, who I see a it? couple. All right, come down here and we'll come get some pie. Well, here's something that I think. Are we, you have any Star Wars fans in the audience? Look, what are the odds of that? Who, who thinks they're the, the biggest Star that? Wars fan here? Who really thinks they're probably the biggest? You're, you think you might be? Here's a sheet. Copyright Lucasfilm 1985. It's with some stickers, but all the stickers are gone. <laughs> wow. Your own adhesive copyright stamp. You like the gummy bears? You shook your head no. You don't like them? You like Uncle Scrooge McDuck? All right, how about this book I wrote the intro for? <laughs> What did, what did you have in mind that I was giving away, Patrick? I have a year's supply of Hollywood reporters that I wanted to get rid of out of my apartment. <laughs> you brought them with you? Yeah, I brought them with me. Weird. That sounds like something you want to who get rid of. Who likes the, the recent industry? Remember. Who likes the last... Who would like to bone up on the last year? Of, you got to take them all. You have to... Take, wait, was someone really... Wait, you got the pie Are they before. still in print, the Hollywood reporter? Yeah. I, did I read them? No. No. <laughs> You like Watto? Ooh. Ooh. Do you like Watto? Got any yeah. Watto heads in the house tonight? Yeah. Wow. wow. It's, it's very dusty. We, we went into a place today, we were traveling around, and there was a place called the Lucky Duck Thrift Shop. Ooh. And I said, we should go in there. Lucky Duck, right? That's yeah. good luck. Yeah. You were they, doing your, you were saying it like David Lynch, though. What? Can you do a little? You do we David should, Lynch too. We should go. We should go into the Lucky Duck because <laughs> ducks are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, and they had two Wattos for sale, and that was one of them. It's, that's why it's covered in dust. <laughs> Who here loves the gummy bears? All right, pass this book up These to are them. The fans are it's a book books. about gummy bears. Yeah, yeah. If it, uh, they're not actually any candy. I'm the gummy diabetic. bears are one of the uh, cherished crown jewels of the Disney intellectual property crown. This book is not yet released. <laughs> oh, yeah. This was an unreleased book. You like that? 
I don't know why everyone was pointing at you, but I gave you the book. <laughs> I don't know if you were aware, everyone behind you was pointing at you like, give this guy the book. So I did it. George, can I give you something? George, can he give you something? George, he wants to give what you is it? something. What could it be? Is it something good? So, I know that you like to take your previous uh, McClunky, not McClunky edits, yeah. out of circulation. Yeah. Um, but before that, you had another enemy in the book. My bootleg. Uh, it's a bootleg copy of the, the holiday back. special. Mm. All wow. Right. If I had time and a hammer, I'd track down every bootleg copy and smash it. Do we have a hammer? <laughs> Do we have a hammer here? Anyone? We are out of time. No, you don't have a hammer. Have a hammer? Have a hammer? If, does this does this theater own a hammer? Does the staff of this venue know if there is a hammer on site? All right. <laughs> uh, can I give else. Nelson away to the audience? Yes. All right. Who wants yes. Nelson? Here, you know Whoa. What? Oh. Ow! You took out an eye. <laughs> well, Nelson has two, so you can replace them Perfect. quite easily. <laughs> All right, we're waiting for a hammer. I don't I mean, think we're gonna get a hammer. I, okay, I'm gonna find Just step I, on I, it. All I saw, all I saw was a bunch of headshots. Oh my gosh, where's he going? I'm He's gonna get a hammer. Oh God, okay. Patrick, this is textbook producing. No, I know. Um, don't do say we have I don't anything? think we're going to Let's get Peter, Paul, and Mary wrote a whole song about this. Yes. <laughs> Let's uh, uh, plug, let's plug some stuff. Next week, Fraggle Rock. Next week, Friday, March 29th, the second season of the new Fraggle Rock back to the rock We're on going Apple back to TV the rock. Plus. Yes. You, now you don't. I don't want you to give away anything. Can you say a word to tease something that will not mean anything, but when they watch it, they'll be like, "Oh, I know what that meant." Is there any oh, word? Oh, like a secret code. Ooh. You can think about it. Right, thank you. Mm. No, no, that's right. Ka Karen, <laughs> while you're thinking. Uh, I have really nothing to plug right now. I'm writing a book. It's going to be called, okay, thanks. We have a wrench. We have a Apparently, wrench. whoever is in charge of the tools is deaf. <laughs> we have um, a wrench. Here we go. go to oh. madinthekitchen.com and check out my stuff. <laughs> and I will be writing a book. And, uh... George. <gasps> George. Oh, oh George, 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 George. Oh. Yeah. Oh, thank God. And just quickly, another round of applause, applause for Patrick saying, I don't think we're going to get the hammer. All I'm saying is I looked back and I was getting head shakes. Oh, that's... All right, it's done. It's done. Yeah. <laughs> that was worth the wait. Worth it. Thank you both for coming on the show, by the way. It was, it was our pleasure. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Maybe the wrench might work well on the case, George, actually. If you want to just crunch it, yes. <laughs> For me to poop on. It's oh, I'm my doing goodness. Triumph. I don't understand why you would make the jump to that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Smigel might have some things to say. It's like a very long oh, walk. I yes. Have, okay, here, Aaron. Okay, I have a special... She came up with one. I, a special message. If anybody has seen in Fraggle Rock Back to the Rock Season 1, there's yeah. a character called, I see Joe! <laughs> a fierce fraggle who was frozen for hundreds of years. <laughs> and in season two, I have to tell you, beware of the colder boulders. Ooh. 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 <laughs> I like that rhyming. The colder boulder? The colder boulders! Can I pitch a character? The hotter otter? <laughs> And the cool thing, and the, here's the thing, they get along. Like people, who, at first you think they're gonna fight, then the viewers will start shipping. <laughs> the colder boulder and the hotter otter. <laughs> well, I don't think, you'll have to tune in to find out, won't you? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. Yay. Absolutely, well, a lot of content on Apple TV Plus. <laughs> Watch uh, Killers also on Disney Plus, one of the best family friendly streaming services out That's there. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, I want to thank our wonderful guests for coming out here. Thank everyone for coming to the show. Uh, and for those of you who came to uh, uh, see the doc, tell your friends. And may the force be with you always. Always. Thank you.